to anything. I'm not going to um, present anything um, clinical or academic. Uh, purely is I uh, try to share some of my stories, um, um, how I travel through uh, my experience during that COVID crisis as an art therapist, mother, an immigrant, and an art-based researcher. Uh, uh, as I say, arts is quite an important part in my clinical and academic uh, career. So uh, in my presentation, I will use some of the poetic inquiry to explore my emotion and my experience in COVID time. Um, so I have uh, five little stories to present what COVID mean to me. So when the first lockdown was announced in March, 2020, I'm probably like everybody, I was so anxious. I was anxious about where I could set up a private space in a busy house for online sessions during the lockdown because I have children, I have pets, I have grandparents live with me, so it's full house. And I was also worried of several, um, I, will, I worried about several of my clients who did not have a stable accommodation because of the financial difficulty or domestic violence situation or high suicidal risk. But look at my half empty refrigerator. I was thinking about the long queue in supermarket. Um, but I also I worried about the how some of my clients could afford to stock up the food supplies because they only rely heavily on their benefit um, and payments and they do not have saving. So entering this certain COVID uh, crisis, I was overwhelmed by my multi-identities. So in, in, all, in order to be ready for this certain crisis, I not only need to create a support plan for my children, for my clients, but also a support self-care plan for myself. I cannot be a supportive or calm mother or therapist with a worried or anxious mind. So I try to create a space, a safe space for myself first. In my garden, I have an art making studio I have decorated this little uh, garden room with many Chinese elements. By the way, I'm originally come from China, but moved to New Zealand about 20 years. But as you know, uh, as immigrant, um, whatever how long you live your home, but home elements so important for us. So in this little uh, uh, garden room, I have so many elements from my hometown. Some of them I bought from my homeland, but some of them I found and modified in my adopted land. So I have my lotus painting on the wall and the corner of shelf is full of Chinese philosophy books. A little sculpture was from my friends and the tea table, if you can see in the middle made by my husband and with the tea set also from him. So this is a physical in-between space I created for the sense of home. Setting up this room was my attempt to find an emotional balance in the homemaking process through using physical elements to connect my root culture. So in this space, I felt the calmness and the safety. In my garden tea house, I felt the impulse and the desire to share my physical homemaking space and to share this sense of kindness and safetyness with my children and clients. Therefore, I decided to set up an online session space inside this tea house. I tried several locations for my desk in order to get the camera, the computer camera facing the most relaxing view to my tea house. So I left my meditation cushion in the room and open the blinds to let the sunshine in. I let my Chinese elements like objects, gifts and books and tea table, I lived in that space. I made sure through that uh, computer camera view, my clients could see my painting of Lotus, 
which is the supportive symbol um, metaphor for myself. When I sit in front of my work desk, I feel the strings support my back from all these objects. So I created a physical in-between space between my personal life, my professional life, between my private space and the shared therapy space and between my root Chinese culture and the adopt culture, which I share with my clients. The homemaking process is not only for myself to feel comfortable as immigrant. By sharing my in-between physical space, I enlarge and intend and enlarge my sense of emotional belonging and emotional balance as an immigrant therapist to my community. I invited my children to the tea house and the home session room. I introduced each element to them and explained its significance from my culture, the strength and the growth. I encourage them to recreate their room with all elements which comfort them in order to create their own space, the calm and safe space for their homeschooling time. I worked with my children and my husband to create a study work family timetable in order to provide our uh, private and restful time together as a team. During my first online session in my tea house with a client, she sang a song with me. As I listened to her voice, I feel something through my body. After the session, as usual, I started my own creative ref reflection as a way to debrief this session. I write a poem to document the embodied sensation I felt when I was listening to her song. I am her tree to provide the rest spot. Under my shade, she is singing. I hear her calming and soft voice from her hurting heart with her hope and determination. Her voice is warm and confident like sunshine behind the dark clouds, trying to penetrate the darkness and hit the top of the tree. I am that tree, hearing her calming and soft voice, feeling the warmth through my body and heart, dancing with my soul and mind, singing along with her comforting voice, swimming with her heart melting tune on this cloudy day. I am a tree, needing this warmth and the comfort to grow and to mature, to be able to stand strongly for my people passing by providing the cover and the rest spot in the unexpected storming, um, storming rain. Through the tree metaphor, I saw the needs inside myself as a mother and a therapist for creating calmness, safety, and the support. I sense the need from my children for my protection in this crisis. I recognize my role in supporting my clients in this challenging time. I also identify how my clients support me to be balanced in the rain and the wind to find the harmony with my heart and soul. I empower my clients through arts, but at the same time, they give me the power and strength through their creativity and the company. With them, I feel that I was not isolated in this lockdown. Throughout this ongoing uh, COVID crisis, I protect my children and clients, but at the same time, they comfort and support me as well. So my second story is really about my research journey during this COVID time. So during my PhD study, my research was interrupted by the forced lockdown. I could not go to university's uh, workspace to immerse myself in writing up my thesis. I could not continue my study plan and the data collection. I could not to see my supervisors face to face for meetings. And I even not in the mood to focus on my research because my half empty refrigerator 
was my main focus. I needed to go to that overcrowded supermarket to get enough food supplies for the lockdown. I went to a supermarket with my DIY mask because I could not find any surgical masks in shops at that time. The supermarket was so crowded. Everyone was busy shopping or waiting silently in the long queue. Then a Pakeha lady near me start staring at me with unfriendly gaze. She was probably in her 60s and was tightly dressed. I moved away from her to continue my shopping in front of the vegetable stand. Then she moved in front of the vegetable box, continued to stare at me with anger. Her facial ex expression was full of disgust and the look set in my heart. I walked as far away from her as I could. But a few minutes later, on the other side of the supermarket, an old Pakeha man, probably in his 70s, looked at me, also with anger in his gaze. This time he said some nasty words to me, shaking his head with anger. I asked him, what's your problem with me? He did not answer, but repeat the nasty words. There are people passing between us, but no one seemed to notice our exchange. I finished my shopping as quickly as I could and tried to run away from that unpleasant moment I had just encountered. You know, I have encountered racist attitude in the past in on rare occasions, but I encountered them twice in a short space of time that day. With my therapist head on, um, I had the impulse and the desire to help these vulnerable, anxious, scared, even angry people. With my immigrant head on, um, I had a sense of grievousness, sadness and anger, but also anxiety and fear. In this unexpected crisis, hidden racism comes to the surface. From my practice as immigrant art therapist, I sometimes experience the uncomfortable, tense feeling while working with my clients, especially with my immigrant clients. These feelings and emotions can be disruptive and problematic. They often influenced by my intersubjectivity and empathy or contentionsference. The therapist's own counter-transference reaction can be used for data, but also counter-transference can lead to problematic professional behaviors if the therapist is not aware of the, their personal reactions. As an immigrant therapist studying in the topic of identity, I feel this pain, shame, anger from discrimination needed to be processed and understand. Um, to, in order to avoid that problematic transference. This crisis intensified the hidden racism and the discrimination in the community. However, as art-based researcher, the crisis private, um, the, the, the crisis actually offered the opportunity for me to look into these necessary and the crucial elements of identity study. So in my first online meeting with my two PhD supervisors after the New Zealand first lockdown began, I proposed to include my personal and professional experience as an immigrant therapist during the lockdown into my PhD study. I told my supervisors about the, um, this experience of discrimination I just experienced. I could not hold my tear back. Crying in front of my supervisors was so embarrassing, but somehow it was the most appropriate way for me to express what I was feeling at that time. So at the end of the supervision meeting, my supervisors agreed I could convince them through my research process. So with this urge, we, but also with anxiety, 
I immerse myself fully in the art-based research process as immigrant art therapist, as well as the normal person surviving through the rest of the lockdown. I document my understanding how my clients I uh, and I supported each other during my online sessions. I look uh, recorded my growth from day-to-day -day work with my people from my community, as well as from spending time with my family. I document these experiences, fragments, moments through drawing, poetry, and music, and a story. We, and with that interruption of the uh, COVID crisis, I end up with a large amount of raw re research material for my later research analysis. I included the crisis into my PhD thesis as my late, uh, latest uh, that collection chapter. At the end, this accidental um, chapter, which I didn't propose at the beginning, but I included at the end, become the most powerful and sense-making chapter for my whole PhD thesis, as well as for my identity formation process as being an immigrant art therapist. So my third story, um, my third story, it's uh, related to one of that uh, instrument I made um, during my PhD uh, thesis, and how that voice of um, um, that instrument encouraged me to embrace my own voice. So during my PhD research, I invited myself to learn a new form of art making as art-based identity study. That new art making is called Gu Qing making. So Gu Qing is an ancient Chinese music instrument with over 3000 years old history. I brought Gu Qing making into my PhD research as my intersection of two wonderful worlds, my Chinese culture and my adopted culture. In the process of making Gu Qing, I helped a piece of old timbre to gain voice as an in instrument, but at the same time, a making and the researching process helped me to gain my voice. So that was the timbre I used to make my instrument, which has traveled from China. That used to be uh, uh, like a Chinese old house and but was a, a part of the bin. And so my instrument is kind of like a Maori carving uh, process, needed to carving the whole instrument through that whole timbre. So from this process, I reflect my own voice as immigrant, um, as, um, and Joanna mentioned at the beginning, we always have that, uh, the, the anxiety around our accent. So as an immigrant therapist, I have to deal with my voice, with my own anxiety as an English as second language speaker. I have been unconfident about my voice since I arrived at this adopted land. I'm anxious when I have to call a client for the first time because I'm worried about my accent might push the client away. I'm concerned that my accent indicates my cultural incompetence for working with clients who are not from my cultural background. I remember many times um, phoning uh, newly referred clients as soon as some of them heard my accent or heard my Chinese name they become disengaged and request to be referred to another therapist. I have to say I was hurt at the beginning, but I become used to it. I tried to avoid making phone calls to the referrals, instead email them, signed with my four official titles and the registration numbers. Through Gu Qing making, I invite my Gu Qing to sing with me. When I heard my Gu Qing's balanced voice, I reflect on my feeling towards my own voice. My Gu Qing has its unique accent, as no other instrument could sound exactly the same. I have to be comfortable with my own voice. Having an accent does not indicate my 
English language competence, but indicate my life experience as immigrant. My accent has become a therapeutic tool in my art therapy practice. I often have referrals of people who had a troubling upbringings, and they usually have a low self-esteem and trust issues. Being an immigrant art therapist with my unique accent, I share my vulnerability with them. I often invite them to correct my English pronunciation or ask them to teach me something from their cultures, such as a piece of music or legend. Through the opening up about my feelings of vulnerability, about having an accent, I provide a space or opportunity for these vulnerable clients to gain confidence and self-respect through helping their therapist. I use my unique accent to build rapport and trust for therapeutic relationship. My coaching told me to be proud of my accent by interacting with my coaching voice. I gain my voice back. So that's the coaching I made at the end. I spent uh, almost three years making it, and uh, at the same time, I'm learning how to play it as well. Um, so my fourth story is about my identity formation as a therapist, immigrant therapist. With a newly set up session room in my tea house, I have had a few online sessions with my clients. In these sessions, many of them shared their anxieties about their lockdown. They are people with couple relationship issues who now needed to confine themselves together with, um, you know, with their um, uh, issues and tensions during the lockdown. They were people with anxiety and depression issues, and some of them had risk of a suicidal ideation. Then I thought about an old lady I saw during my last grocery shopping. She was moving very slowly with her walking frame with a pile of grocery on the frame. She could not manage a shopping trolley while using her walking frame. Thinking these vulnerable people from my practice and my community, I feel sad. My mind is full of my worries, as well as the desire to do something for these vulnerable people. I was unsettled for a whole day of the last 24 hours before the forced lockdown. I remember a specialist, a health reporter from a local newspaper, New Zealand Herald. I read some of her articles in the past. I thought about contact her to share from my therapeutic, um, my therapy knowledge about how to look after self through the lockdown. But my mind was full of self doubt and pain from the past displacement traumas. Who are you? You're not the top expert in the field and no one would be interested to know you. Just like the old times, you will always be invisible in this adopted land. I am a therapist. With compassion, empathy, and aroha in my heart, I want to offer my voice with all these from my heart to care and support my people, my people in this adopted land. Who are you? You even can't speak in perfect English accent and someone might laugh at you just like the old times you will always be suppressed in this adopted land. I am an immigrant with trauma, pain, but also courage in my heart. I wanted to offer my voice with all these from my heart to show and to make a loud statement to people in this adopted land. Who are you? With naive and immature speech, your voice is worthless and pointless, just like the old times. Your voice would be, you won't, won't be heard by no one. I am an immigrant therapist. With an immature voice, with my accent and insecurity, but it's my voice from my heart. It might be worthless and pointless to some, but it will be a milestone to me. 
Through this poetic exploration, I let the new me to comfort the old me with the embodied strings from my art-based research gene. After writing the poetry, I was brave enough to contact the reporter. Well, writing my letter to the reporter, I thought about the unfriendly gaze and the nasty words from the supermarket visit. I thought about the old lady's slow progress with her pile of grocery on her working forms. I thought about my client's anxieties and worries through that poetic exploration, our tension and the conflicts I experienced as an immigrant, as well as a therapist come to the surface. This imbalanced and suppressed elements in the formation of my identity has reached the crucial turning point where my identity development needed to change from one mode to another for transformation and growth. The COVID crisis becomes the activating agent for me to reach the critical turning point of my identity formation process as an immigrant art therapist. About 12 hours before New Zealand goes to the first lockdown, I was reading my published commentary piece. All my point and opinions were there without much editing. I reading this piece carefully as I was just a reader from the public. I tried to imagine the old man who told me the nasty words was reading this. The old lady with the working for a frame was reading this. My clients were reading this. I was emotional when I read the last sentence I provided in that article. We can go through another great social trauma together by caring for, each, for ourselves and each other. My mature voice make me finally truly believe I'm part of we of New Zealand. At the moment, when I see my voice published in the mainstream media as a professional opinion piece, I believe I'm strong, brave, knowledgeable, and compassionate enough to care for myself and the we of all New Zealand as a New Zealand Chinese therapist. I'm going to share the last really little story to end my presentation. More than two years from the first lockdown in New Zealand, we're still battling with the COVID crisis. And my identity formation process as immigrant art therapist is ongoing. In these two years, I supported my family to go through the toughest time of several lockdowns by providing my improving cooking skills, sharing my learning of resilience and showing my growth in crisis time. In these two years, I supported my clients in their most needed time to accompany their loneliness and to listen to their struggles, to seek the happiness in their everyday lives and to look for hopes with it. I continue learning from my family, my children, and my clients. I worked with a Maori culture background clients through the near three years COVID time. As she was pregnant with her new baby, she concerns the risk from COVID for her and for her new baby. I have been working with these clients through all this lockdown online, we worked together almost every week. When the time was close to her due date, her anxiety about having birth in the COVID time became more and more unbearable. In one session, a few days before her due date, I shared a Maori song I just heard from YouTube, the song called Tarina. This song was sent by a Korean immigrant couple in Maori language. In our session, in the virtual art therapy space, we listened to the sound together. When my client, you know, my client uh, smiled as she heard the faint Korean accent Maori sound. In the session of the following week, I attended the session on our agreed time. When I asked how was everything going for her, she turned her camera to her side with my surprise in her screen. I saw a beautiful sleeping baby's peaceful face. I feel the speechless with the full joy in my heart. Then my client told me 
her new baby arrived when she was playing the song, Terina, I was shared with her. She says in that moment, she felt I was with her spiritually. I could not hold my tear back anymore. With my tearful eyes, I looked into the screen with proud, with hope, with the sense of belonging to this land and with my aroha. Sometimes when I'm stressed by my work or frustrated about the situation which I'm unable to change for my clients, I have a doubt I, why I wanted to be an immigrant therapist. In that moment, when I was looking at the baby's peaceful face, I suddenly found the answer. I am an immigrant art therapist, an art-based researcher. I use the power of arts to fund the dreams for our shared future as more resilient community. In my art-based research, in my art therapy practice, by working with my people on my adopted land, we're heading to our shared dream together to form a healthy, resilient, hopeful, and happy future for my clients, ne next generation, for my children, and for many following generations after us. I am an immigrant art therapist and art-based research. Children and clients under my protection, opportunity arises, win crisis, voice that cannot be silenced, identity formation unfolding, dream is still in front of me. Thank you, that's the end of my presentation. <laughs> can you stop sharing your presentation? Yes, I can. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful Sorry, Ingrid. I Sorry, I, I, I went a bit too long. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's just so beautiful. It's a healing for me. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, um, I think, I was... um, yes, yes, me too. I think a lot of um, uh, joined a similar feeling. So let's uh, share it together. Nikita, can you um, give us that um, auto-generated breakout rooms? The, this... Uh, um, be mindful around the, what you're sharing and, and, and it's, a, it's like a sharing enough that you protect yourself as well as protect others. And when you're sharing, um, can you let uh, Nikita will uh, write the questions of, this is a purely whakafana tanga time. So that um, we will have a few, uh, about four or five in that within the group and we sh share about the, your journey uh, within the COVID and um, your name and uh, where you're from. And um, yeah, she, she will uh, write the questions properly than me. <laughs> um, I look forward to uh, hearing that feedback session. So uh, not time is uh, 10, 17. Um, we will come back by 35, 10, 35. Is that okay? Of Oh, thank you. Look forward to hearing from you guys. Let's make a room. Thank you, Nikita. Thank you, Ingrid. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Nikita, I'm not going to join a room because I am cooking at the same time <laughs> and I won't be able to contribute to the discussion. So I'll just wait for the next presentation. And I have to leave early as well, Joanna. I'm sorry I have an 11 o'clock meeting, but um, beautiful so far. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I'm muted. Oh, thank you, Bex. Can you let me in um, Bex's space? Yes, one moment. Thank you.
Oh, how do I put you there? Oh, no, sorry. No, I 